Hey everybody, if you have a Soundcraft UI24 and you've been wondering how to connect it to Pro Tools so that you can multi-track, I'm going to show you how to do that right now. Let's go! Okay, before we actually get started, I want to say this. The way that the Soundcraft UI24 handles its USB sends from the mixer to your computer is a little bit different than how other mixers in this price bracket do things. So if you're not super comfortable with how these things work, or if you're not super familiar with audio sort of in general, I'm gonna suggest you watch our other video where we go in depth on what the USB sends are, what they're set aside for, and how to use it in conjunction with your DAW. Once you watch that video, come on back and check out this video. It'll probably make a lot more sense as we go through it. If you're choosing to move ahead anyway, or if you've just come back from watching the other video, I'll say that I'm not going to go super in depth on how the mixer is set up the way I did in the suggested video. I'm just gonna do the basics you need to get it working with your DAW. And then of course, I'm gonna talk about getting your DAW set up to send and receive signal. So now let's jump right into the mixer. The first thing we need to do is tell the mixer where to look for any information that's coming back from your DAW into your mixer. So there's a couple of ways you can do that. You can click on each individual channel in your mixer window, go up to the edit button, click on the patching tab, and then click on the USB DAW tab. And then you can choose any slot you want. You do not have to put slot one on channel one. You do not have to put slot two on channel two. If you wanna move things further down the line on your channel strips, you can do that. In this case, I'm gonna tell channel strip one to look on slot one. And I'm gonna click down here on channel two and tell it to look under slot two. And now if I go back to this main window, you can see that down at the bottom of channel one and channel two, it says underneath the fader, DAW1 and DAW2. So I know just by looking at it that anything coming out of output one and output two from my software coming back to the mixer, those are gonna show up on these two channel strips. So that's, that's the slow way to do it. The quick way you can do it is to come up and click on the cog, come over to your patching tab, click on USB DAW1 to 16, and then you can actually click through it like this. The other thing you can do is just hit patch one to one. If I hit this button, it will patch all of my channels, one to 16 and 17 to 32 that are coming back from the software onto the channel strips, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, all the way up to 32. So let's click on that just to watch what happens. Do I wanna do it? Okay, yes. And you can see now that the first 16 channels have been patched. And if I click on this button, you can see the remaining channels have been patched. So let's jump back to the mixer. And now you can see, of course, each channel at the bottom is showing that it is getting its signal from the DAW returns. So this is great in getting it set up to receive. What do we have to do to get it to send signal out to our software? We don't actually have to do anything. All of our channels are automatically going out over USB to our software. The thing you have to remember, and it's very important, channel one going out of your mixer is not gonna show up at input one on your software. It's actually gonna show up at channel 11. So channel one is actually channel 11 in your software, channel two is actually channel 12 in your software, and so on, up the line. The reason for this is that the first 10 channels leaving your mixer on USB are set aside for your main bus and your aux buses. So channel one and two are holding the left and right from your master bus. And then three through 10 are holding the signal from your aux one through aux eight. This means that you can send signal through your main left right mix. If you have a mix going, you want that full mix to be captured in your software as well. You can set a couple of channels in your software to receive on channel one and two, and you'll get anything that's showing up on your master bus. 
And then of course, three through 10, the same thing. Anything you send into your auxes, one through eight, will now show up on channels three through 10 on your software. So when you really think about it, all you're doing is adding 10 to whatever channel you want to pull in on your software. If you have a microphone plugged into the physical channel number one on your mixer, you're going to tell the software to look on channel 11. So you've added 10. And if you plug a microphone or an instrument into the physical input channel two, add 10, that's 12. So you're going to tell your software to look on channel 12 to get anything that's plugged into channel two. And your physical inputs, one through 22, they are hard-coded to the numbers that I've just said. So one is 11, two is 12, three is 13, and all the way up the line. Those numbers are what they are and you cannot change them. Okay, so that's great. We have our head wrapped around that a little bit, I hope. But looking at this mixer window here for the Soundcraft, you're gonna see that, okay, we've got all of our input channels here set to be information coming back from our recording software. What if I have a microphone that I wanna plug in and use it and send to the software? Well, we need to set up a channel to do that too. So let's take our channel one here and let's change its input to be local one. So I have a microphone plugged in to one. I'm gonna bring that microphone over, check, check, check. You can see there's a little bit of blue signal here. Let's actually click gain. Let's bring this up. And now we've got some more signal. And if I bring this up, we're gonna see that we've got green signal, meaning the channel is active. And we're seeing it on our master bus as well, on our main fader for left and right. If I pull this up a little bit more, we're gonna hear it show up on the speakers in my room. You can hear it getting louder, hear it getting quieter. So we have signal here coming in from our microphone and the rest of our channels are set to returns from the software. Obviously, if you have more than one microphone or instrument that you want to use and send to your software, you just have to tell more channels where to look. So if I had another two microphones and I wanted them on channel strip two and three, I would click on channel strip two, click edit, local two, then click down here on three, local three. And now if we look, the channel strips have lost their indicator for being DAW. They are now just the regular physical inputs on your mixer. So really quickly, if I take my microphone out of channel one and plug that into channel two, you can now see I've got signal on channel two. Check, 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 check. Let's bring this up just a bit. Can we hear it? Yes, we can. And same thing if we take it out of two and plug it into three and then do the same thing. Let's bring our gain up and bring this up. Check, 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 check. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. There you go. So that's how you set inputs for physical inputs and how you set returns coming from your software. Obviously the next thing to do is look at our recording software and see how we set that up. All right, let's look at our Mac. The first thing we need to do is open up audio MIDI setup. This is where we can see all the devices connected to our computer that allow for audio input and output. You can see, because we're using Pro Tools, I've got the Soundcraft UI24 here as a selection, but I also have Pro Tools Aggregate. Pro Tools Aggregate is just a way for Pro Tools to bundle together every device you have, and then you can turn them on or off inside the aggregate, and if they're on, you have access to them when you're inside Pro Tools. That's great if you want to use more than one device for audio input or output while you're in a session. If you're only going to use your Soundcraft, you can use Pro Tools Aggregate and only select your Soundcraft UI24, or you can just use the Soundcraft 24 itself as the device. Now, we're not gonna choose the device in this window. This window is just so we can talk about Pro Tools Aggregate and to show you that we are in fact seeing the Soundcraft connected to our computer. If you weren't seeing it, you could restart 
You could check your USB cable or even swap your USB cable if you have another one. Once we know that we're seeing what we're supposed to, we can close this window and then we need to come into Pro Tools. And before we start up a session, you need to come up to Setup and you need to go to Playback Engine. This is where you choose the device. Now you can see Soundcraft UI24 and you can also see Pro Tools Aggregate I.O. If you set up your Soundcraft inside the Pro Tools Aggregate, you can choose Aggregate here or you can just choose the Soundcraft on its own. In this case, that's what I'm going to do. I've chosen Soundcraft and now I can click OK. And the next thing we need to do is go back into Setup and come into I.O. This is where we tell Pro Tools to look for the input and output channels. You can see that both the input and output tab already have some default assignments. Pro Tools is basing this on what it's seeing on the USB connection. You could leave it this way, jump into a session and start working. You would just need to tell each individual channel strip in the software where to start looking for the channels. Because remember, it doesn't actually start the input on channel one. Anything coming out of the mixer is gonna start on channel 11. So you could leave it this way and just be mindful of what your routing is once you're in your session. But if you want to avoid confusion, what I would do is delete these. So highlight them all and click delete path, then click new path. If you don't intend on using the master left, right, or any of the aux sends out of the mixer, you don't need channels one to 10. So in this new paths window, if we forget about those first 10 channels and start everything at 11, we know that the physical input count on the mixer is 22. So we could type 22 channels. And this box here, add default channel assignments, that is usually on, but turn it off. Because if you leave it on, it will still assign these new channel paths back starting at input one. So leave it off. You can choose mono or stereo. I like to have things in mono, so I'm leaving it as mono and I'm going to click create. Now we have 22 channels, just what we would expect. We just have to actually enter the channel assignments now. So instead of clicking here in box number one for input one, I'm going to come over and do 11, then 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, and so on, all the way down the line. We don't need to do the same thing on the output tab because we know that everything going from the software back to the mixer does actually start on number one. But if we look at the output tab, you can see that they are done in stereo. Again, if you wanna leave this, no problem. You can leave it that way and still work just fine. I like everything to be mono, so I'm going to select everything, delete the paths, and then I'm going to click new path and just to keep things simple, we're not going to do all the outputs. I'm just going to do, let's do 20. And add default channel assignments. This time we can click that. I'm going to leave it as mono, click create. So there you go. It's given us 20 outputs and we can see that it's routed them automatically starting at one and going to 20. Once I've done that, I can click okay and I'm ready to open a session. So let's do a new session. Let's just call this test session Soundcraft. Down here, you would set all your information for your session. I'm not going to change anything. It's up to you to figure out what you need for your setup. I'm gonna click create. And here we are in a session. Now, you'll notice we don't have any channels. So you need to do that. You can come up to track and click new, which will bring up this window. And then you can enter the number of tracks you want, the type of tracks you want, whether you want them to be mono or stereo. Let's just do something simple. Let's do 10, no, let's do, let's do three tracks. Nice and simple. These channel strips are automatically routed to input one, two, and three. They're named one, two, and three, but we know that in our IO setup, we actually started them on 11 going up. You can change the name here if you want to. So you could call this input 11. 
input 12, input 13. So now you can see input 11, 12, and 13. For me, that's better because no confusion. I know I'm looking at input 11. So technically, this is ready to go. So if I pull my microphone over, which I'm going to do, check, 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 one, two, we're not seeing anything in Pro Tools. Why not? Well, that's because we haven't clicked on the record enable. Check, 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 one, two, there you go. We can see signal based on what we've done in our mixer, which is have a microphone plugged in to channel one. So right now, I could hit record and I could record a track, or at least I should be able to. So let's give that a try and see what happens. Check one, two, check, check one, two. I'm checking this microphone. Now we're gonna test it for playback. So we got a waveform. That's a good sign. And we can see there's information there. It's not very loud, but it's there. So technically I could hit play right now and it should show up in our software. I'm doing that, but we're not seeing it. How come? Well, that's because we don't actually have a channel set in the mixer to bring information back. We did originally, but we changed it. So what we're gonna do right now is pick a channel here to bring information back on. Right now, channel four is set to receive information from the DAW on DAW four. So that's actually output four from the software, but this channel here in Pro Tools, it's not going out on that channel. So right now, let's first set our channel four to look somewhere else. Let's come up to the edit window. Let's do USB DAW and we'll choose slot one. Are we sending to slot one? Let's find out. Nope, we're not hearing it. We're not seeing signal. So what do we need to do? We need to set our outputs on our channel strips. Pro Tools did not do that for us by default. So the bottom drop down here on the channel strip, this is for your outputs. Right now, this is set to a bus. So it's just sending it internally in the software. We're gonna click on it. We're gonna choose output and I'm gonna choose output one. So now if I hit play, Oh, look, we're seeing signal, but my strip fader is down. So let's bring it up. One, two, check, check, one, two. I'm checking this microphone. Now we're going to test it. For... Check, one, two, check, check, one, two. I'm checking this microphone. Now we're going to test it for playback. And there we go. We've now set inputs and outputs in the software. And we've set an input and we've set a return in the mixer. So we could do the same things we've already done for multiple channels, both in the mixer and in the software, and we could get a full multi-track going back and forth. There you go. Signal from our mixer to our DAW, signal from our DAW back to our mixer. I know it was a little bit complicated, and if you made it all the way here and you're still not really sure what was going on, I'm gonna recommend you watch our other video where we go in depth on how the USB sends are handled by this mixer, what those certain sends are set aside for, and it'll probably make a lot more sense. Just wanted to mention, I'm gonna do this same video for Pro Tools on PC, and that should be out in a couple of days. So make sure you're subscribed with notifications turned on so you do not miss that video. Anyway, with all that aside, I hope this video was interesting, entertaining, educational. If it was any of those three things, please like, share, subscribe. And of course, you can check us out on Patreon, or you can do a super thanks down below, or even join this channel down below. And that helps us to grow our channel. Anyway, until we see you next time, thanks for watching here on Quick and Easy Quickies. Bye.